excited, man. Yeah, hey, recording has started here on May 19th, 2022. Um, and we're getting ready to go here. So, Chris, you got any updates or lectures or anything? Uh, just uh, I took a few days off there. I took a few days off. I laid down the phone, didn't answer no texts or didn't do nothing but uh, went camping for a few days. Got way back in the woods and uh, there wasn't any signal where I was at. Did a little trout fishing, was swimming in the swimming hole. And had a pretty good time. So I'm tan, rested, and ready. Uh, as far as doing anything, I haven't done a whole lot uh, this week here. Uh, we did, uh, last thing I did was uh, Sunday, uh, I did a Zoom conference uh, uh, Sunday fun day with the group that I'd usually do on Monday night. So they, they did a thing, and there was uh, one guy that was explaining how to uh, actually bring federal criminal charges up on these states that are these state judges and, and prosecutors and stuff. He is explaining how you go about it. It seemed pretty uh, seemed pretty doable. I mean, by the time I was done listening, I got to listen to most of it, and then we had a bad storm come through and knocked the power out for three and a half hours. But uh, <laughs> but it was a uh, it was an interesting Zoom conference. Uh, a real. Uh, he explained how you went through the whole process, how you fill out. You can go to the websites and fill out the forms and, and uh, you know, serve it in your whatever district you're in, whatever federal district you're in, and you're acting as your own prosecutor. So, yeah, it was – and a lot of it had to do with uh, – uh, because, see, in the, in the states you can't – you can't really uh, uh, fight – the constitutional issues uh, because the courts are tribunals and they don't care about your constitutional rights at the no, state no. level. But in the federal courts, that's exactly where you go with this. So, uh, you know, they were talking about deprivation of civil rights and, and you know, <laughs> and it was very, uh, very interesting. I, I'm going to go back and listen to the rest of it here either tonight or tomorrow listen to the rest of the uh, the conference there, the conference call they had, and then uh, did the other one with the, with Jay and uh, answered a few questions. And, and uh, But uh, you had mentioned getting hold of some folks because people on your site are, you know, wanting some uh, testimonies or whatever of how this stuff is actually working. Yeah. And uh so uh I'm I'm thinking what I can do, Tad, is I'll send you all these uh screenshots that I've taken and you can add them to your site or you can look at them and get back with me and figure out which ones you which ones in uh, one of these folks because they're coming from all different angles. Uh, you know, which one of these folks you would like to get in contact with, and I'll try and get these folks run down and uh, see if we can get them on, maybe even get them on uh, uh, one of our nights, one of our Thursday night conference calls. Uh, For sure. So they could uh, tell your, you know, show your folks how this stuff is working. Uh, To me, it's really working. It's worked rather well with the uh, remittance process, the the coupons. And uh, I sent you a a revised uh, remittance letter here not too long ago. Oh, that's right. (laughs) Where I I changed some things uh, about it. And uh, I was talking to Jay Saturday, and he was going over where where I've been telling folks to go to Send them to the CEO. Send these coupon letters to the CEO. And the reason I do that is because the same reason 
that I that people need to send these contracts and these 1099As to the Treasury. So they get in the Treasury's hands. The Treasury touch it. The Treasury touches them. Uh, then let them send them to Ogden, Utah, or Austin, Texas, or wherever else they want to send them. So he was talking, and we were we were looking at the contracts for a lot of these credit cards. And uh, in the contracts of these credit cards, they'll say uh, somewhere somewhere along the lines of, uh, if you're making a payment in full, send it to this uh, address. Right, <laughs> where you normally send the regular payment uh, with the coupon to this a certain, a certain address, and uh, this one here sends it says send it to this address. You know, so they'll break out an, an address that you can send if you're sending a, a full payment. And the folks that are doing that are having a lot of luck or a lot of. Uh, uh, positive uh, responses where they're actually discharging the debt or they're they're settling, they're accepting the coupon. Uh, there was one gal on there that was saying that uh, she did that and uh, <clears throat> she did the coupon letter and they called her back and they said, uh, you know, this isn't a, a, a form of payment. And you have to send uh, real money. Well, what's real money? Uh, real only gold and silver is real money. Uh, the the st- other stuff that you send isn't. They said, well, we can't accept this. Uh, uh, I think she did it. Hers was a little modified to what I do. She actually made a money order out of the coupon, so. Uh, they're like, you know, you have to send a, a real money order. Well, this is a real money order, actually. Uh, it's no different. Uh, it's no different than it is real money. And so the lady was giving her a rough time about it, and finally she just said, look, uh, I guess you just want a, uh, some criminal charges brought up on you. <laughs> and she broke out this federal uh, code, you know, this federal <laughs> this CFR kind of thing, and, uh, you know, and read it to her, and the lady said, oh, well, that's different. And they ended up accepting her coupon. Oh. So I can't remember which, which one it was right offhand, but she actually threw a, a CFR up there on the lady. And, Look, this is a crime, not to, you know. So uh, I was kind of laughing the way, and she's like, oh, man, they accepted it. <laughs> uh, so that seems to be where a lot of, I'm hearing a lot of success lately with. And that's the uh, the coupon people are paying off their cars. Really? Uh, coupon, yeah, with a coupon. And uh, there's been a few payoff cards, but mostly credit cards. Uh, some of them are, are uh, not paying off the full amount. Uh, one guy sent sent a coupon in uh, for ten thousand dollars on a something a little over eleven thousand dollars on his uh, uh, Barclay Barclay uh, credit card. I think it was a Mastercard, or something Barclay Mastercard, and he had ten thousand dollars taken off. Showed showed right up. <laughs> and then it said available credit ten thousand something or another. <clears throat> so they actually accepted his. And uh so what I'll do is I'll send you uh I'll send you a bunch of uh I guess I could I could put them in I'll just put them in an email. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll attach them. I'll attach everything I've got uh that I've screenshotted and then you can look through them and we'll talk about it and we'll see if we can't get a hold of the people. And get them coming on the, get them coming in the talk show, or getting on the, getting in the website, and, or at least getting there. You getting your their, uh, getting uh, their email to you, right? So you can start communicating with these folks. Uh, uh, maybe get a little step by step thing going to what it was they did. You can question them and stuff, and uh, that that may help 
folks on your site figure a better way of doing it uh, if they're having trouble. <clears throat> but there has been a lot of success, really has. I got uh, probably 10 screenshots I can share with you of people that have bought cars from 1099A. Okay. Uh, dis- discharge some uh, discharge some debt with a with the remittance process. So I will do that. I'll get that sent up to you, and you can your folks can look at it and see. A, a lot of people, and, and I even said this at the beginning, Tad, that a lot of people uh, are going to be successful with this, but and some aren't. Uh, right. You know what I mean? Some aren't. It's just, uh, you know, I don't know what it is, where the magic's at. You know, I don't know the, the right abracadabra uh, to for this to be totally successful. It's basically a hit or miss kind of thing. Uh, you know, it may depend on who it is that you're talking to or, uh, you know, what uh, finance company you're dealing with or, you know, uh, because some some seems to... Some seems to be okay with this. Yeah, we can do this. And then some are like, ah, we can't do that, you know. Uh, and, some, you know, some people are, are doing the process, getting the getting the stuff sent in, and, and they're not having any problem at all, you know. Uh, you know, or in some call back, and, oh, this is, you can't do this. This is some sovereign citizen stuff. And, right. You know, it's, you know, like I said, it's a hit or miss kind of thing. Uh, but it is working. Uh, I would would it would it be great to see this work ninety five percent of the time? Absolutely. Uh, but until people get in the right, you know, the right uh, mind frame of what it is that we're actually doing with this stuff, and realize that yeah, we're getting paid now. Uh, you know, because when you get a credit card, that's your credit. That money's right. coming straight from trust. And they're making money off of you. And instead of relying on, if you do this process and get paid, instead of relying on someone to send the minimum payment due, uh, they're getting paid and, and they're getting used. Think about that, man. If you can charge, if you got a card that has a $12,000 limit, and you can charge ten thousand, or you can charge twelve thousand up, and knock ten thousand out just like that. Uh, you're gonna that car is gonna be a lot more active. Right. You know what I mean? If you know, if I knew that I had ten thousand dollars at my disposal where I could just charge whatever, I'd be buying all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, because I know that I could, I would be discharging it. You know, as soon as it got up there high. You know, you could charge ten thousand dollars worth of stuff in one month, and then turn around and send them a coupon. <laughs> you know, here you go, guys. <clears throat> They're going to see that they're moving a lot of stuff. They're moving a lot more cash. They're actually going to make a lot of money doing it this way. You know, and and there's there's going to be a tipping point. There's going to be a tipping point. There isn't any kind of thing that you do. Uh, there comes a time where this 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 tips. And when it does, it's going to run like crazy. Uh, people, a lot of people are going to are, are going to gather wealth doing this. So, but right. yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. If you want to hit, open up them calls, we'll start all right. Some. Let's start with five four one area code. Uh, go ahead. Five four one. <laughs> hey, Chris. This is Mindy. Hey, I thought that was you. The Mendenator. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be sure to um, buzz in real quick when I got on tonight. Um, I'm glad to hear you got out in the woods and got to relax without that damn phone and enjoy time with your family. Right. Awesome. Um, so my quest, my question for you, um, today I uh, contacted the... Uh, Eugene Police Department, good friends of mine, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> sarcasm, and I put in a request, uh, public records, for them to, um, oh, I'm sorry, the Eugene, I'm sorry, Municipal Court, 
I wanted to know okay. from them what the bond number was because I have a document that shows a uh, an employee named Teresa C. pulled mm-hmm. the bond on uh, four days after I was arrested. Okay. And I I contacted um, them today, the court, and I asked, I pointed out who pulled the bond, and I said, I want the bond number. And she directly replied to me saying she didn't understand what I was saying. So I shared with her uh, an image of the document, and she replied with the number, uh, which she says is EPD case number 21022604 Stone Melinda Suzanne uh, slash Trespass 2. That is not a bond number. No, that's a case Correct? number. Right. So do you have any suggestion on um, who would have this information if it's not her who actually pulled the bond? It, 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 so you were talking to the same person that pulled the bond four days after you were arrested? Yes. Okay. And, and she's playing stupid. Right. Yeah. Then you said that's not a bond number. That's a case number. Yes. Yeah. Are you going to make me go to the DTC with this? Am I going to make my her... Person? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Can first. you repeat that? Well, so I guess you were I, I guess what you're really trying to tell me is is that I need to go to the DTCC with this. Because you're a clown. <laughs> and you know damn good and well that's a case number, not a bond number. You pulled this bond. You're the one who's going to be in deep freaking shit with this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the DTC. See. And who is that? I'm going to pull this. I'm going to pull this number, the Depository <clears throat> Trust. Uh, it's in New York City. I'm going to have the, You're denying me. What I would do is I'd do a FOIA request. That's the first thing I would do. And in the FOIA request, I would say I do not want the case number because there is no case number. I wasn't properly arraigned. I want the bond that was the bond numbers, number or numbers, that were created against my trust. I would do it in a FOIA request. The, that, the, the reason you want to do that is so that if they refuse, and they probably will. Now you have a letter that you can submit with a full, when you submit a FOIA request to the DTCC. Uh, these guys don't want to honor the, uh, my right to, to the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, they're denying me the bond numbers. That's when the DTCC will step in. We'll get you the bond numbers. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I would suggest this for anybody. If you're going to FOIA request, and the reason I'm telling you all this is because this is um, – penal bond issue thing going on here. Uh, We're going after the penal bond. Don't act like a clown to me, judge. You know damn good and well that there's bonds created. Not only am I going to go after these penal bonds, when you're done, I'm going to have your bond. I'm going to have your bond. The the lady you were talking today, I said, said, you know what? Uh, Okay, you want to play clown? You want to play a clown? You want to play Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey? Here we go. Uh, I, you know, don't tell them you're going to submit it for it. I, but what I would say is you know exactly what I'm talking about, and this is being recorded. This conversation okay. is being recorded. Even if you're not recording it, tell them you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Because they they don't think that most of the time folks are actually going to record these conversations. Right. But if you want to act a clown to me, I'm going to at least tell you that I'm recording you. And then yeah. I'm going to say, okay. When I'm done, I'm going to say, look, they're going to start. Once you tell them that you're that they're, re, they're that you're recording them, they're either going to hang up on you or they're going to shut up on you. And when the next yeah. get your words in, when they shut up, 
Right. That's when you're going to say, look, uh, you know, when I'm done with you and you're in court, ain't none of y'all going to have bonds to work your jobs down there. You yeah. You want to play clown with me, lady? I'm going to have your job. Watch me have your job. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and that's that's enough. Mm-hmm. That's enough to scare them when you talk to these folks like that. Now, are you going to get me the bond numbers, or are we going to play a hardball? <laughs> okay. Stop, at, stop acting like a fool, like you don't know your freaking job. Right. Uh, because when okay. I have your bond, you ain't going to be working your job. Yeah. Uh, All they right. They know they got. Well, they know they got bonds. They have if they don't have a bond then they're not supposed to be working at all. Right. And we'll bring some right. federal charges up on them. <laughs> I've been working on I've got so much stuff going on in India. Uh, but one yeah. of the things I'm, I've been working with last Sunday was some guys that were, oh, well, you need to do need to. They were straight up telling me, man, you need to go do some federal charges on that crap they got you on there in Tennessee. Yeah. And I'm like, I, well, I, I kind of want to see where, Yeah, I want to see where this decision goes. Because there is no statute of limitation on fraud, and that's one of the things I'm going to have them with when this is over. No, nice. I want this to go back. I want everybody that's going to get involved to be involved in it. That way, yeah. I can start write down. I can start writing up names when I do these criminal, these federal charges. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if they don't have, I'm going after their bonds. I'm going to at least have the bond numbers. Uh, you want to play clown with me, lady? Okay, this is how I play clown. Uh, okay. Tell them. Tell them. All right, awesome. Uh, well, have, I, have it one way or another. I'm going to have it <laughs> with you keeping your job or have it without you keeping your job. How do how you want to go with this? Uh, that's where I get. I don't, I don't play with them. I straight up scare the crap out of them right away. Okay. All right. Well, that's uh, excellent advice, and I will uh, I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah, give it a shot. Let me get, and then message me or call me or whatever, Mandy, and tell me how it went. Okay. I sure will. To, if, you need back, if you need backup, I'll look for you to call and while you're there. Okay. Put her on. Put them on the phone. Yeah, put right. On the phone, lady. Let me tell you. I don't think they, I, I don't think they'll let me in the courthouse because I've leaned them. Remember. Yeah, yeah. They just they just call Be the cops on, on me when I go in there. Yeah, well, how how are you gonna call the cops on me? Once you do well, this, once you get this time. stuff done, you go look, man. Here's here's what's up. Here's what's up. Uh, this courthouse owes me money. Yeah. I'm about to put every one of y'all out in the street. You can be funny working your job down there underneath the shade tree. Right. Because see that's what that's what a lean they get real stupid with this, Mindy, and what we'll do is we'll we'll actually do the U C C on them. Yeah. We'll do them in another yeah. state. We'll I'm I'm holding out state. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well that's how we'll do it. Then we'll go down there then you can go you and Sandy can go down there with chains and locks and <laughs> uh, this is ours. Uh, it's, you can lean a man depriving him of the beneficial use of his property. Right. That's what you're doing. I, I own this courthouse. There's a lien <laughs> on it right now, and, and uh, as soon as you guys pay the lien, you can go. You can have it back. Right. I'm putting All this right, in the man, courthouse well, in the impound yard. Uh, I'll I'll <clears throat> I'll let I'll run that one by Sandy, but I'll let other people ask you a question. Hey, thanks, okay. Mindy. Hey, thank you Have so much. Night. Take care, Chris. Yeah, call me tomorrow. Okay, let's see what happens when I hit next question. 479, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, Chris, my question is pretty close to hers. Uh, this is Don from Arkansas, and I had the case in Missouri. I filed the CA. Uh, they all of a sudden decided they wanted to dismiss the case, so they dismissed mm-hmm. it. My question is, uh, I had to pay a bond in order to get out of jail. Uh, what happens whenever they dismiss a case to the bond? 
You you should get the ten percent back. So whom do I do I need to go to the bond? Go back or? to the courthouse. Go back to the courthouse and say, look, uh, I need I need my ten percent back. You guys aren't getting rich off of some shit you close. Uh, and and get with the, the if you get with the bondsman, the bondsman's probably going to shuck and jive you. Uh, you yeah. go to the courthouse and say, "Look, I want something in writing from you all right now that says that this case is closed, and and my ten I should get, I want my ten percent back." <clears throat> You're not going to profit off of something you don't have a right to. Neither is your bondsman, because right. they're officers okay. of the court too. The bondsman's an officer of the court, too. Uh-huh. So I could probably do both. The court, uh, the courthouse is two and a half hours away, so I don't necessarily want to drive up there. I think I'll do oh, yeah, it via yeah. email. Yeah, who's your, um, who's your, uh, uh, you probably already got something from them that says the case is closed, right? Yes, I got it in writing. Damn, man. Uh, <laughs> we we got an ambulance coming up the road here, man. Hang on, y'all. Uh, hey, who are you looking for? That's my neighbor, man. I know they didn't call the house. I no wanted the house called the, the ambulance. My neighbor's been uh, real sick, man. He's been he was real bad sick even before the corona. He was he had a uh, he had a uh, some illness there that had him screwed up. Had him in the hospital for a long time. Even well, he was welder. He uh. You know, breathing in all that. Yeah. You know, nasty felt. Yeah, the fumes and stuff. So he's got a real cash out bunch of lungs, man. I hope he's all right. (laughs) So. Alright, so does that answer your question? I believe it does. That's, uh. Okay. The facts for me. Thanks. Coming back now here. Hang on. Hey, who y'all looking for? What's the address? Are are you guys on Plum Way? This is Plum Way. 228 what? Damn, man. I hope nobody's dying. They're freaking on the wrong damn road. (laughs) Oh, man. Okay. They said 228. They didn't say what road. All right, so we'll move on to the next one then. Uh, 313, go ahead. Hey, Chris, this is Jonas. How you doing, man? All right, man. How are you, Jonas? I'm doing good. Okay, a uh, couple questions here. Um, you were saying um, uh, on the when you do your 1099A, if you buy a home or what have you, Twenty percent um, of anything left over can go to the beneficiary. The rest has to go into the home and whatever you furnishing, whatever you want to do. Is that just a? I haven't seen that written anywhere. Is that just a, uh, um, if you will, a? No, that's a what that's, that's what contractors that, are. That's what contractors are do. Contractors okay. do twenty okay. percent. And that's what you're doing. Okay. But see, it's not 20% of. It's it, 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 that's only in in a in a in a way. If you're buying if you're buying the house for 1.5 million, and you get 500 thousand, uh, because you want to do renovations, you want to put in a pool and and do a, tear out the kitchens and stuff like that. Uh, right. For upgrades, right. 80% of that 500,000 needs to go for for the cost of of the upgrades. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Absolutely. Twenty percent of that it's twenty percent of that money that you get. 
You get that because you're acting as a contractor and you're subcontracting out the work. So it's kind of like your pay for it's your pay for getting the subcontractors together. Now, if you want the trustee to actually do all that for you, you know, do the subcontract out the work. Well, then he gets he should get the twenty percent. You know what I'm saying? But he's already going to okay. get five straight off the rip just for being your trustee. Absolutely. So you so what I'm saying is you buy the home for whatever the amount is. You're gonna your your in box two is gonna be higher. So whatever is left, eighty uh, percent of that needs to go into the home, and the other twenty yeah. percent can go to the beneficiary. And it should go yeah. into a beneficiary account set up. I would. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah, now, if you're, is if that you're going to be that, a beneficiary? You're going to you want a beneficiary account. You're going right. to act like the beneficiary okay. and do all that cool beneficiary stuff. So, uh, you need a right. beneficiary account to put your beneficiary money into. Right. Now you can, and then when you put your money into that, you can have a debit card or what have you to use against that. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's nothing okay. different about a beneficiary account other than you're not the authorized representative. Uh, you can get a savings account with a debit card as a beneficiary account. You can get a checking account with a debit card and as a beneficiary account. Uh, the only thing that's going to change about it is they can't fractionally bank your your funds you put the 20000 into the bank account, and that's exactly where that money is going to stay, at the bank. They can't okay. take that gotcha. money and fractionally bank with it. That's and where they actually make the money with at, it. fractional banking. Yep. That's gotcha. Now, if you do the W-8-B-E-N, that, uh, well, that, that, now that amount should not be taxable. Is that right? Well, if, if you do the W-8-B-E-N, that's going to be for your FICA taxes. Uh, that's not going to be for okay. taxes on on your beneficiary account, but check it out. Uh, every uh, every trust or every SESTA-K trust uh, uh, is a taxpayer. Every taxpayer is a SESTA-K trust. Well, if every taxpayer is a SESTA-K trust and you got a beneficiary account, then you're not a trust. You're a beneficiary. So the 20, 20% that goes into your beneficiary account is not going to be taxable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You guys remember how they yeah. did this, uh, you know, uh, Biden was like, well, you know, if you got $600 in your account or more, you have to report it. No, right. you don't do that as a beneficiary. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to report because that you know, when the benefit. Right? Okay, because when huh? I when I when I became when I became secure party creditor back in 2017, I did uh, we did the WAB and we did all of this stuff to to Treasury, but I did an affidavit for Treasury to take care of any bill, my taxes, and anything. Well, since then things have you know, evolved, and I did the, you know, the status update, which I know you don't have to do any status correction for this, but uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm taxed, I don't have to pay taxes. So uh, I was just yeah. uh, making making sure. Now, next question is, is there a rate, because I see some, uh, for a, a trustee, some charging 5%, some charging 6 I've even heard of some charging 8%. Yeah, well, that's eight percent is like uh, what a lot of realtors do. Uh, right. Five percent, five percent for for doing trustee work is pretty good, uh, especially right. what we're doing. You know, yeah. if you're oh, doing yeah, you buy, a, a two yeah. million dollar deal, you know, uh, your guy's going to make, uh, you know. Five thousand dollars on every hundred thousand. You know right. how much money does not, the trustee uh, need to sit on his ass and write checks, man? Right, right. Yeah. And, and 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 the thing about it is, some of them they are they are 
not going on the price or the value of the home. They're going on that two, the uh, number two box where you put the higher amount at. So they want, you know, the percentage of that, which is not a problem. I'm just saying, you know, that's on them. If anything goes down with that, that's on them. That's it. That's, you know, that's what they want. That's what they contract with it. Okay. You know, so, okay, now, um, are you still okay? Now, well, you're breaking up. <laughs> Can you hear me, Chris? Yeah, I hear you. Oh, boy. Okay. Now, yeah, on the, my phone. I, I am, oh, okay, I am getting ready to do the, because I am one of the guys that you that you say, the $100 million guy with $100 million bond that really, yeah. you know, I am getting ready to do that with the uh, CA to the Treasury. Now, you have that on your site. Uh, uh, why Why a, are you going to do a, a conditional acceptance? Why are you going to do a conditional acceptance to the Treasury with your $100 million bond? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Not not a conditional acceptance, but a contract. Because you, you, you mentioned okay. that. Yeah, you I mentioned that. I'm just going to do a. We'll get my... Yeah, no, not a conditional acceptance. It's, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at some notes, and I'm looking at something else. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to do a contract with them for the – they get 35%, and I will get the 65%. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Now, you have an example yeah, yeah. of that on your site? There's a uh, – You have – There's there's the contract. There's a uh, – on, on Tad's site there, there's a uh, uh, a contract. On whose strategy. site? Mine. On whose site? Mine. Oh, you oh, have the right dot okay, com. Yeah. Yeah. On you have the right dot com, there is conditional acceptances and claims of liens and remittance letters and contract with the treasury. All that stuff's on there. Now you'll modify yours slightly okay. different than the ones that are on there because you're doing the bond and uh, you're not doing. Nobody's doing the tax stuff anymore except the ten uh, the ten forty B. So, okay. yeah, you can go on there and look at that. Now you're gonna okay. you're gonna uh, change the verbiage around a, slightly to meet your your situation, your your bond. And, right. Uh, you know, you're gonna monetize your your certified copy of the of the bond and uh, send it on to them with the, the assignment ag- agreement. Uh, those are pretty easy to do, folks. All you got to do is Google that, and it'll, there's a bunch of different templates you can use to do that. Okay. And if you sign a, okay, because, you sign a lease agreement. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I'm sorry. I cut you off. Go ahead. I said if you uh, if you sign a lease agreement, you've done a uh, an assignment agreement. Right. If you've ever signed a lease right. for an apartment or a lease for a car or anything like that, you've already signed an assignment agreement. And you rent a car, you're doing that. Uh, right. You're doing an right. assignment agreement. So they're pretty easy to do. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, but it's on the site. Okay. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll give it a test. I, I'm going to definitely go on that site um, tomorrow. But um, uh, I, um, I'm definitely getting ready to put that pro- that process into motion. Uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't need to be sitting on that any longer. So we'll see how that yeah. works. Okay. Well, that, yeah. that, that's one of, oh, oh, one other question. Yeah, have you heard from your guy on the houses and cars? You know, your, your trust got to want to be a trustee. Yeah, well, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get to go uh, uh, in the groups this week because uh, I was on a little vacation there. But <laughs> there is a uh, – there's a real estate company out there that's ready to do it. There's also another guy who is going to be doing uh, trustee stuff. He should be. He probably is. I, I should know by Monday how he's how he's set. Uh, he's going to do it okay. for cars and you know other things. Uh, uh, my brokerage guy. I got a couple of emails from him while I was gone. Uh, okay. He hit me up, so then I got to respond to. I just got home a couple hours before uh, before I got on the horn with Tad here, so I got some catching up. Okay. To do. 
should have it done by the okay, weekend. Okay, good. She knows but, something pretty soon okay. about the about the high end broker. Right, right. Okay, well, good. I'm glad you got some rest. Enjoy yourself, and uh, I'll, you'll be hearing from me this coming week. Yeah, man. Thanks for being coming on. Right, thank you. Get over yeah, there okay, on that. Get over there on that site, you all. Uh, get over there on that yeah, site I'm, and I'm, look at those documents that we left, man. There. If you want to learn how to do this stuff, you're gonna to have to look at this. You're gonna to have to look at the conditional acceptance. You're gonna to have to, uh, uh, you know, make copies or whatever, and and then modify them yeah. to suit your own needs, man. And I've been on his um, site. It's pretty, it's pretty good too. I just haven't been on there lately, but I'm I'm going on there tonight, so I'll talk to yeah, you. Yeah, man. Thanks All right. All right. Yeah, thank buddy. you. Good night, man. You're welcome. Two four zero. Hello. Hey, go ahead. Um, this is Elizabeth um, from like two weeks ago about wanting to become a lawyer. Do you remember? Yeah. 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 So um, I'm just following up because somebody did reach out to me, but she's yet to like set up a date for us to chat, and I don't know when that's going to be. And I was hoping if maybe you can reach out or maybe set a time. Uh, that part of that came broken up. Did you repeat that? I was saying that um, last week you said that you were going to let somebody reach out to me via mail and email, excuse me. And she did reach out. But she's yet to um, set a date for us to talk. So I don't know exactly how okay. she's going to help me um, with my situation. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, run that, Tell me what that is again. It is about... Your situation. Basic, yeah, it's my employer being discriminated against. Me, so you said you were going yeah, yeah. to have somebody reach out to me to help me with that process. Yeah, yeah, so, you had like a discrimination thing going on with your employer, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. I remember now. Yeah. I sent you a follow up email again. I don't know if you saw it, but um, if you, I don't know how you're going to help, but if they can set up a time with me. Any time this week or next week, it, that would be great. I just want to make okay. sure y'all saw my email. But okay. I do have you another question. Proton. You sent that proton mail, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and can you also send me the conditional acceptance as well? I would like to have it like a copy for myself. Okay, what's your what's your your first let, uh what's your email address? Your first uh I tell you what, why don't you why don't you go to the site and email me and I'll pass it on to Chris. I, yeah, well, I tell you what, send me another one. Send me another one tonight, okay? Send me another one tonight and then I can uh then I can find, I'll, I'll collect it up with all your other ones that you got. Uh, I'll I'll do, I'll help you. I'll help you get situated okay. with that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Can I ask one more question? Okay. Sure. Um, so I have been doing some research and like about the banks and stuff. And we know like the Rothschild is like one of the wealthiest families and they own like most of the central banks in the world. Yeah. And I just mm-hmm. want to know how does that work? And how is it different from is it like a private business that they have? Like I was like digging deep into it, but I'm not sure how they can control the whole world, basically the whole banking system. They control. So the how money. does that work? They control the money between the countries. That's how they control the world. Uh-huh. Um, control the money. That's kind of a that's kind of off topic, but uh, um, I can make I can make a recommendation. Go to YouTube and look up a cartoon. It's 28 minutes. It's called The American Dream Film. That will give you an idea. The American Dream what? American 
dream film, like a film in a theater. Yeah. Okay. And do we have access to, like, can we access the, because you say they control the money. Can we access the money that they have because they control the bank? Well, that's what everybody's been trying to do. That's what 1099 is all about. Yeah, that's what, we're, that's what we're trying to do, get a hold of money. Yeah, we need to take the, okay. we need to take that power away from them. But even if we even if we all got together and did all this stuff, they're still controlling it. So every country that has the banking system, do you, is it like the same fraud that is happening in the United States right now with like you know? Yeah, yeah. The the, it's trust. called the uniform. It's called the uniform commercial code. Every all two hundred and nine sovereign nations in the world are a part of the. Universal Commercial Code, and commerce is the way is the movement of money and goods. Uh, then they're controlling it. Those rich families are the ones controlling it. <clears throat> That's how it is. So, Russia, for example, I know they don't have the Rothschilds banking system. So, are they the only country that doesn't, you know, participate in this corruption? I don't know. I don't know, but they're probably corrupt. Okay. They probably are controlled by the Rothschilds. They just they just control it in a roundabout way. Uh, yeah, they say they're out of okay. they say they're out of the banking system, but they're not. They're still dealing with us. And they're China is part of it as well. Yeah, they all are. They all are. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Send me that email. Hey, Chris. Hey, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Quick question. Um, so, referring to the bank, um, I understand what you explained about the beneficiary account. Let's say someone does that, and the bank still ends up charging fees. My question is, how do you enforce, how do you make them recognize it you, after the fact? You have to remind them. You have to remind them. See, they're going to do that uh, if they think they can get away with it. But once you go in there and you, hey, man, this is a beneficiary account, why are you taking money from the account, the trust? Right. But but, but maybe I may, I may clarify a little bit, right? If you just talk, if you just say this to the, a bank uh, agent, they're going to tell you that, oh, there's only POA, POD, and, uh, you know, maybe if you do a trust or something. But they don't even understand. So the question is, just like for the coupon, right? The coupon, you kind of go to the CEO because you want to hit the decision maker. You don't want, you don't start arguing with the regular employee who doesn't get it, right? So my point, my point is, how do we pass through that layer of ignorance to get remedy? Yeah. Well, if if you can't talk to somebody directly at the bank, then you need to talk to their uh, manager. Uh, Right. Because the manager is going to know things that they don't know. Uh, right. Look, you're the trustee. You're the trustee in this in this account. Do we have a contract? Uh, that's what this is about. Uh, uh, they've agreed to be your trustee, and uh, they're not supposed to be charging you. So if you tell them that, look, you're not supposed to be charging me. Uh, this is supposed to be free. Uh, this, uh, this is because I am not the authorized representative here. I am the I am the man. I am the, the signer. I am the beneficiary. You've agreed to that. Uh, the reason they get away with that charging the fees in the first place is because most folks open up their account as an authorized representative, not as the beneficiary. Uh, you, you're going to have to talk to the folks. A lot of these. Uh, tellers and, and stuff, they're not even, they're not going to know what you're talking about. They don't even know what a beneficiary is. But the managers do. Uh, that's your best bet is get with the manager and, and talk to the manager about it. Say, look, you know, I, you know, your employees don't understand that they are in a fiduciary obligation to the trust. And, and uh, you know, and I'm sure you do, Mr. Bank Manager. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're thoroughly, you thoroughly understand what's happening here. Uh, now, 
these charges need to be returned to my account. These charges that you're creating need to be turned to the ben- returned to the beneficiary's account. Uh, and then you need to cease. You need to cease and desist. Uh, and 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 they they more than likely that's exactly what it'll be. Is talk to the manager. Right. They'll and be like, we'll, okay, let me look into this. Let me look into this, and I'll get back with you or whatever. And they'll uh, they'll figure it out. Right. You know, but you want to you want to you want to go for a little while uh, assigning the stuff. This isn't something you want to do right away. If they're charging you six dollars and fifty cents for a maintenance fee, let them do it for about four or five months while you're signing all this stuff. And then you can come back and go, look, man, for the last six months or four months or whatever, uh, you've you've transacted a dozen of these things. What's up? What? Say what? I say okay. Okay. So, but would you, would you sign Hold electronic? On. Yeah, it's a. Uh, hey, hey, the ambulance guys. The am- the ambulance and the fire department are down here at my neighbor's, uh, up the other holler there. Uh, apparently, one of them's dead and the other one's getting tased. So, yeah, a little excitement in the neighborhood tonight. <clears throat> it's probably Joe. Joe's a Joe's a little throwed off. He's his dad's probably dead and he's a little freaked out. His dad was pretty old and. Had uh, smoked cigarettes his whole life, that kind of thing. So that's probably what's going on. All right. So, um, caller, go ahead with your question. Uh, the la- last point on this, Chris, was um, would you sign electronically? For example, I, I, I you know, I, I spoke to a bank and they wanted to to sign on the on the screen to keep an electronic signature on file. Does that matter, or do you have to... Yeah, that's sign? all right. Yeah, I've signed beneficiary a bunch of those electronic uh, signature cards. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah, if you've signed beneficiary, B-E-N-E period, on that signature card, or on that electronic signature board, mm-hmm. it's the same as if you signed it in, in, in uh, you know, in uh, wet wet ink. And you're going to be. When you start signing checks, you're going to be signing wet ink and, you right. know, statements, the statement at the, you know, the when they deduct it from your account, you go in there and say, I don't need a cash withdrawal. You're going to take the ink pen and sign it. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. All right, so does that answer your question? Yep, thank you. All right, thank you. Let's see. Okay, 636, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Chris. It's Rob from again. Hey. I, uh, I got an interesting one here uh, from the court clerk uh, regarding the CA that I sent out. They, uh, uh-huh. they returned them with a letter here, and it says uh, the documents re- we received on April 25th uh, it says, uh, we are returning the documentation you recently forwarded to the court as they are indecipherable by the court clerk staff. <laughs> so what did you do, write them in Dr. Chicken Scratch or something? No, I sent them the CA. They returned the CA that I sent them. <laughs> well, they're saying they can't decipher them. It's all legal stuff. Yeah, I think that you try to say like, you trying to say you can't understand your own legal your own legal system. It doesn't matter okay. if they return them; they've accepted them. Right, I think they're uh, kind of bamboozled by it. That uh, who they tase then? Uh, maybe that dog. Uh, I was just telling you all about my crazy neighbor, a sewed off neighbor. Uh, my daughter just come and told me that uh, he hung himself. He's dead. Holy crap. 
Yeah, he's like I, I can see the I can see the lights from the uh from the, the cops and the everything over there now. There is the stones throw away. Uh, maybe two maybe two stones throw away from here. Two houses away. Yeah, they, Joe was a little thrown off, man. He's been in and out of trouble a lot and on probation, and uh, he's always a little thrown off. He's always been a little thrown off. So, yeah, there's a lot of inbreeding goes on here in this community I live in. Huh. Uh, you're laughing, but I'm totally serious, man. I know you are. Yeah, I'm totally serious. Totally serious. That's too bad. I like Joe. He's a little thrown off, but I like him. So, yeah. All right, so did, I, did you that, catch uh, his question other... by any chance? No, what was the uh, question? Yeah. Well, uh, no, I said, I said, what I said was uh, uh, they've accepted him. They, there's no oh. such thing as returning a conditional acceptance. Right. That's your problem. If you can't decipher legal freaking leg, legalese, a little legalese, and mostly case law, and here this is your job. This is your profession to know this kind of stuff. Look, how many of y'all uh, uh, see a case, uh, a case name and description and, you know, the, uh, the Smith versus Jones? You know what I mean? And you see the case number and everything. Right? How many of y'all go on to freaking uh, Westlaw or Nexus Lexus and, and, and do the research and, and, and read the, you know, read the case? Uh, you mean to tell me that you can't get on the freaking uh, computer and research these uh, cases and, and, and decipher what they are? Yeah, I think uh, it just you, blows their mind because they're so used to just mulling over everybody, you know, and nobody, uh, if anybody rebels against them, it's uh, in their own uh, Admiralty yeah. Tribunal, which they uh, they get mowed over there too, you know. And that's what it is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they send them back. Uh, it doesn't matter if they freaking bake a cake and, uh, and uh, you know, do whatever crazy stupid things they do. Uh, they accepted it, and the 10 days is up. Right. Uh, they can crunch them up and soften up the paper and use them and wipe the backside with. It doesn't matter. You've agreed to this. You have, Whether you understand this or can decide this or not, you have contractually agreed. I was talking to a guy today that's writing conditional acceptance over some, uh, uh, over some traffic stuff. Uh, he swapped, he put tags from another car on his car, and he was driving on a revoked, and uh, uh, he got a ticket. They, they pulled him over and got a ticket. They got him for all kinds of stuff except for uh, uh, driving without uh, insurance. They didn't ticket him for that, <clears throat> which he didn't have. Uh, but he was writing a conditional acceptance, and we got to talking about it today. I bet you he hung himself up here in these trees right here next to our house. I see guys walking around flashlights over there. Is yeah. that the guy that was uh, the neighbor that was real sick? Yeah, my neighbor. They're walking the around one. up here with flashlights in the woods. Right. Is that the one that was real sick, though, that you said? Yeah, no, no. That was a different guy. They see, The guy I was telling you about that was real sick living above us. The ambulance came down the road on past that. They're lost. Now that they, now looks like they're walking around in the woods up there. I wonder if he hung himself on one of them trees up there. Who knows? Here comes my nose of the death her. Yeah. She had to be able to tell us. Yeah. Uh, I got another one from the Supreme they, Court, too, that I thought was kind of amusing. Too, Chris. What? It's uh, from the Office Chief Disciplinary Council, uh, Supreme Court of Missouri. 
And it says they're in uh, in receipt of my complaint. They're calling the CA a complaint against the uh, Chief Disciplinary Council. And uh, I have determined that your complaint should be referred to the Missouri Supreme Court Advisory Committee pursuant our Supreme Court Rule 5.08B. So now they're calling it a complaint. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that's crazy. So it's far from a complaint. Yeah, that's crazy that they can't read their own stuff. You know what I mean? They They can't read. they, They can't even read. Yeah, that's crazy. They've never seen it. But I, I would expect that, man. They, they, chances are they know exactly what they got. Uh, when we did this, they sent these to, uh, you know, these judges got them in their hands. And, oh, this ain't nothing. They threw it over in the corner. But then when they started having the the UCCs dropped on them, oh, we better look into this, you know. And they actually, they've avoided, in our situation, they've completely avoided the conditional acceptance. They want to talk about uh, the UCC ones and how they're, how they're, how they're, uh, uh, they're, we filed fraudulent liens and when they're not liens at all and how we forged them when they're not forged at all. But they refuse to acknowledge the conditional acceptance. The whole thing. Uh, you know, the, case, it, it, the the state has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that 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 we intended to defraud these people. There has to be intent for there to be a crime. Uh, he intended to shoot that guy. Oh, he intended to rape that girl. Uh, he intended to rob that bank. He walked in there, you know. They could, could prove intent with us. Uh, and if they would have used the conditional acceptance, they couldn't have proved intent. Uh, how did we intend to fraud you when we got case law that says we can do what we did? From the Supreme Court. See, that's the thing. It, one, if you use one of my conditional acceptances as your template to write yours, then you put in there that you can lean a man depriving him of the beneficial use of his property without any uh, de- judicial determination or probable cause. Absolutely. That's a Supreme That's Court it. ruling. That is a Supreme Court ruling that you can lean somebody and you do not need any judicial uh, determination to do that. Uh, it's why mechanics can lean the car without any going into any courts or anything. They just lean it. They just put the lien on it. And they get a hold of the car till you pay them the money. Uh, you get a cold, you, Mindy, you get a hold of the courthouse until they pay you your money. That's she's, what means she's not here anymore. Well, um, she gets a chance to listen to it later, she'll see. Uh, but that's what's up. Uh, you you told them you used supreme. What kind of freaking lawyer or judge or clerk of the court doesn't understand a supreme court ruling? Uh, that any kid in, in, in the freaking eighth grade, uh, you can give this to an eighth grader and say, "Hey, read this. What does this say?" And in some words, you're not going to be familiar with, but a lot of them they are. Uh, and they would actually be able to say, you know, I know this, uh, you know, I know that this, uh, you know, I know what this means. I mean, anybody with half a cent and knows how to read can read that, you know, can read that and know that. They, uh, I wonder if he left a suicide note. These cops are still over here looking around in the trees. So, <clears throat> I hope not, man. 
It was a weird night, y'all. Just flat I'm watching the cop. I'm watching the cop shine their lights through the trees over there looking for my strung up neighbor, man. <clears throat> and blessings for his spirit to have a smooth journey. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they, that uh, sucks. <laughs> they, they, they're poverty, you know what I mean? They're living in campers over there. Run down campers. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Deal with something like this too, man. He 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 was really throwed off, and then he got up, he got hooked on meth, and got in a bunch of trouble doing you know doing meth, and then he got himself straight, but he's still. I don't know, I think he's schizophrenic or something, man. He does kind of schizophrenic things. But I hate to get sidetracked here. Let's let's uh, answer questions. Yeah, don't worry about it. They've already they've already done it. They've already done it. Here's what I would suggest. Okay. Here's what I would suggest you do if you haven't done it already. Do your claims of links, okay? Monetize the back. And then send them copies. Send the originals to the treasury with your contract. And then send them copies. Now all of a sudden, oh, we, uh, you know, we shouldn't have sent that shit back. Believe me, they sent it back to you, but they made copies of it. Right. And send them, send them the claim the link, and uh, send them the claims of lien by certified mail. Uh, let them open those up, and then what they're going to see is, damn, he did, he done took this one step further. He did what he said he's going to do. Here's now. Here's the link. Let's see if they can comprehend that. The uh, court clerk that said it's indecipherable is the one that uh, well, disappeared the case. So they've deciphered something from it, you know. There, or the case wouldn't have disappeared. Yeah. yeah, they yeah they uh, they got rid of the case real quick and sent it back to you, thinking, well, maybe this will solve it. Well, you'll think that we don't know what it is he's done. And but we dropped the case, so he'll leave it alone. No, now's the time you pour it on. Now's the time you create those claims of liens, and you can find an example of those right here on Tad's website, you have the right dot com. Uh, right on the member right. section, by the way. Yeah, you. I think it, I, it's just two I, pages. It's just two pages, right? And on the back side of the second page that you have notarized, that's where you'll monetize it at. Uh, when you guys see this example of what one looks like, claim a link, it's going to be, there's going to be three pages. The first two pages are going to be just the two pages. And then the third page is going to be the back of the second page, back side of the second page. That's how you monetize that claim a link. You monetize that claim a link for $3 million or whatever it is you said on the conditional acceptance, send, that, send them a copy of that. Send it to him certified mail. Here's y'all's claim to lien. And then see if they don't, oh, see if they can decipher that. Yeah, decipher this. Yeah. I've got, I've got your claims to lien. I found them on Telegram, I think, and I'm working on it. I I plan to have it yeah, done. Yeah, you probably got them from Telegram. Ted's got them on here, too, if any of y'all are interested in seeing what one looks like. One other quick question, and then I yield. Uh, do you have a CA for the electric company? No, I don't. I don't have CAs for utilities. Uh, nobody sent me any to look at. Uh, once they do, I'll change it, and it'll be my name on it. <clears throat> it'll be my name on it as if I wrote it, but I didn't. And, uh, I'm going to get these CAs from you guys, and they look real good. Um what I do is I change the pertinent information around and sensitive information around to mine. Like I usually, I usually use, I usually use 1313 Mockingbird Lane because that was from the, that was the address from the Munsters. <laughs> so, you, uh, but I'll you do said that. I'll change that around. Electric company somehow, didn't you? Well, I'm, I'm no, I've not done the CA to the, to the electric company. I've just uh, 
uh, taught people how to do the uh, letters of the, the remittance letter to the power company and how I would do it, you know, if I was going to do it. Damn, they're still up there flashing the light around. I'll tell you what. Like I sent him a yeah. money order a couple of days ago, so I need to know what you recommend next. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, once you send that money order and put on there under minister extortion or under fraud and extortion on that money order, let them cash it. Uh, like I said last week, that's wire fraud, it's mail fraud. Uh you really want to go there? You probably ought to just give me some free electricity for a little while. So what do I do? Write him a letter and tell him uh, this is fraud? Or did you send did you send them a money order with uh, under fraud and and, and uh, a postal and, and, money and, order and extortion fraud, fraud and duress? You can do it with the you can do it with the check too, man. When you guys do this stuff. Look, the way I see it, man, is uh, if you can't get them to agree to accept uh, a, con- a 1099A for a whole year worth of electricity, then I would suggest not messing with them at all and uh, go ahead and pay the pay the stuff. But because it's it's electric, man. If you could get if you could use 1099A to buy your house. And 1099A is to buy your cars. The least you can do is pay your light bill. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if that's if need be. But if they're going to threaten to cut you off because of what you've done, that's extortion. I'm trying to pay you a, a, a lawful payment, and you're trying to extort me. So here's your money. Uh, you know, here's your money for the, the light bill and here's your money for the reconnection fee, but you're going to get it under under fraud and you're going to get it under extortion. When they see the money order, they're probably not going to read what you got in memo. So go on ahead and send it like that. And then... Uh, and then once they once they cash that... And they come to turn on your lights, you know that they've cashed it, which means they've committed crimes, and they've agreed to it. So that's what I would suggest. If you're if you're doing this process and they cut off your lights or your gas or your water or whatever the case may be, talk to them. Oh, well, if you don't pay this, you know, we're going to cut you off. Or, until you pay this, you're, we're not going to turn your power on. That's extortion. I got the lady on the phone saying that. I'm like, what? You know, what happens if I don't pay this extortion money? She says we're not going to turn your power back on. There you go. What do you mean? What do you mean extortion money? She says. <laughs> what do you mean? Don't you understand what extortion means? Uh, look it up. You can. Webster's will tell you what extortion means. You don't even need to go in Black's Law. Yeah. What do you mean extortion? You just extorted me. So yes, I will be paying this. Uh go ahead and pay the go ahead and pay it because they bought it. Uh when they come to turn your power on again, they will have committed a crime to do it. Not only fraud, uh not only trust fraud because you had to give me your social security number, but also extortion. And there's more than one. Right, so it's conspiracy. Now it's conspiracy. Now it's a conspiracy to commit wire fraud, and it's a conspiracy to commit mail fraud because it's more than the lady who's acting as an agent for the power company. She's acting as an agent, so there's more than one involved. The power company is the principal. You know. Uh, that's where this goes when you guys are doing this kind of stuff. Think about what it is that you're doing, and you can set them up. It might cost you a little bit, get your power back on and stuff. But but once they catch your power on, now you can bring charges up on them. You can bring so charges, like, and you I, can prosecute them. You can prosecute them at this point. So 
so because there is an injured party. There's an injured party. You. You are the injured party. It's not a thing about me and I'm the defendant in the state's prosecution. No, it's not that way. You've actually injured someone. So you can prosecute. And if this was a real yeah. trust and I was a real beneficiary and I entailed expenses like running this generator so the basement doesn't flood and everything, I should be able to send the trust a bill, shouldn't I? Well, this is a real trust, and you are a real beneficiary. <laughs> you know what it, you know what I'm saying? I do, uh, but I'm saying you know if it uh I should be able to send them a bill for uh for protecting the beneficiary's property, shouldn't I yeah, yeah, I would when it comes down to get when it comes down to suing them and getting paid. Yeah, I would. Save that for after the charges, after you drop the charges on them. Then send them a send them a fee. Send them a bill. You know. All right, so does that answer your question? I'm good, Dad. Thanks. All right. Thank thanks, you. Chris. Hey, thanks for sharing again, man. Six. I love I love what he's doing, Dad. <laughs> Six one two, you're next. Hey, Ted. Hey, Chris. This is Peggy in Minnesota. How are you? Peggy. Hey, Peggy. What's going on? Well, well, well. I just wanted to um, just check with you, Chris, if you have any other recommendations. I'm just, you know, as a trustee, I'm just waiting for funds and Mm -hmm. uh, for the beneficiary purchase of a house. Do you have any other recommendations on um, that may be something you haven't covered um, on how to get money um, faster, I guess, maybe through the bank, you know, showing them the 1099A that was done or the purchase agreement for the purchase of a home. Just wondering if you have any other, any recommendations on what I can do as a trustee for my beneficiary. Yeah, uh, I think you're doing it. Uh, you're just waiting on the funds. Once the funds hit, then then you'll be able to, uh, you know, when the, whoever you're going to contract with, uh, well, show me the money. Okay, look at here. See the bank account? Uh, yeah, yeah. They're not going to question it. And they're not going to even want earnest money. They're not even going to want earnest money. Uh, the, the the house on the cliff that you're talking about, those people are going to eat crow. When this is oh done. yeah, yeah that oh that they're house is not going to fail. Yeah. yeah, the the first situation that's done over with. Going to deal with that later on. Um, I'm not going to yeah. put any more energy towards that. We've got a new I house, n- new purchase agreement. And, um, you know, thankfully we can just transfer that 1099A to this new home, but I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way to purchase a bond of some sort that can guarantee between the time that the ten the funds come to me as a trustee to the actual closing date. Yeah, you should. To you settle. Should probably for- you could probably create a bond. Uh, yeah, you could. You could probably create a bond to uh, to to show. Uh, did you do a correction on that on the ten ninety nine? What do you mean? No, uh, I didn't. What the, type of correction? So, uh, so that ten ninety nine A that you filed is that money going to come back to the brokerage or? No, it's it's uh it's going it's the money's coming to me as a trustee. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure that that it was coming that Oh was yeah, yeah, to, thank you. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to make sure it wasn't going there that it was the, you know. Uh because Yeah, they refused. Was, you could, 
you could have done a correction and and then it would have then it would have came to you. Uh, yeah, you could have done a correction yeah. in, a, in a 88, 88 and had it sent right to your uh, right to your account. Yeah, so you've already got. Um, that, uh, what yeah, what kind of bond would you recommend? Because I've been. I tried to do a letter of credit and brought the purchase agreement with my beneficiary there to the bank and the bank managers looking at me like a deer in the headlights and I'm like, okay, this is going to go nowhere fast. But what type of bond? I've even called bond companies and they said, no, 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 we don't handle anything like that. I'm looking for some recommendations. Did they hand did they handle anything similar to that? So they just you told them what you wanted and they said, Oh, we don't do that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They said, Well, once the money comes in, then we'll be able to do something, a letter of credit or whatever. And I'm like Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't need a letter of credit when the money comes in. Right. Right. You won't need a letter to when the money comes in. So the money yeah. will be there what, to buy whatever it is you want to buy. Yeah. yeah. What what kind of bond, though? I mean, I could create a bond, but I don't know how. Um, I'm looking for recommendations on the type of paperwork I'd need to have as proof. So you can do a bid bond or a shirt bond. Isn't that what the bond companies do? It seems to me like that's what you create as a surety bond. You know, uh, there's okay. really no bid on there's really no bid on the house because you got a contract. Right. So yeah, there's an so a surety bond. Yeah. Yeah, I would think you'd be a, uh, a surety bond would be the way to go. Okay. Uh, I'll check into it. Yeah. So, well, I um, I'm glad you were able to take some time off for yourself and get away from yeah. computer and all yeah. that type of stuff, Chris. Yeah, I really needed to, man. There's a uh, there was a lot going on. My wife, she was like, I really enjoyed this. You know, you didn't have your phone in your hand and <laughs> you know, hanging out with us the whole time. And, you know, we stayed in the pool. The sun burnt my big fat belly. So, Good. yeah, it was fun. Good. Good All right. Good. So does that answer your question? All right. Yeah, it does, Tad. Right, Thanks, thank guys. You. Right. You bet. Thanks a lot, Dave. 516 area code. Go ahead. Five one six, go ahead. Try unmuting your phone. Five one six, last call. In from New York. Okay. Um five two zero, go ahead. Hello. Five two zero, yes, go ahead. Can you hear me okay right now? Yes. Oh hey John. Yes. Hi Chris and Tad. What's going on, buddy? Um I just had a couple of questions that might help a lot of people. Um hey, speakerphone, John. Hang on a second. Yeah, we got some uh, There, I got rid of it Yeah, got rid of it Rid of it, rid of it, rid of it Rid of it Kind of a little satanic Sorry about that We could go to infinity on that one Maybe that's the source of uh, warp drive Uh, But I I had a question Um, I have a very historic property And maybe others do but it's a priceless historical property. And w- you'd mentioned before about UCC1 liens. Could, and I've been uh, doing improvements here for 46 years, mining. I hit copper and magnetite. 
uh, veins, have an 80 foot shaft, for example, and could I put 77 million UCC1 lean upon it? Absolutely. It's actually, Absolutely. if you took the whole life of the mine, it would be way, way beyond that. That would be just maybe a 100-year mine life. Yeah. What you need to do is you need to make it unattractive to the freaking state that's trying to steal it from you. Um, no kidding. That's what's up. Yeah. And if you yeah, I've fighting teeth and nail on that one. You could probably put a hundred million dollars, hundred million dollars if you see one lean on it. Uh, well, I was thinking about the, to, they are going to take it. They're going to have to pay you first. Right. Well, then I was going to do the UCC one. There's a way to write them, and I wanted to tell you, uh, you can write them to where you have to renew it in every five years. Or there's another way in the rules. If you go into the rules in Arizona, it's called, this is a future restitution UCC1 lien, which will be displayed on Arizona Secretary of State's website until the lien is terminated by the filing agency, which I won't mention. But Mm -hmm. that way, it's indefinite. And that is a rule with Arizona. I wouldn't doubt every other state would have it. So, you know, you don't want to renew these every five years. Yeah. So, you know, you just need yeah, more yeah. time in nature. <laughs> yeah. But, you could uh, do it. huh? You to renew it. I said, you could yeah. do it, though, because it, it costs you a whole lot to renew it. Yeah. You know but this I'm way, it, it, it's in perpetuity until the large amount is satisfied. And then what I was also going to do on the property uh, was take and do some form of a large in the millions common law lien, and which I already have one on it for six million, but I was thinking that's not enough. I probably need to go to a higher level uh, and then record it with a county recorder tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, you so need to get way then, up Yeah, then who here you have a UCC one and you have a common law. Who would want to screw with that? Uh and then I had another uh you do question. Both? You do both. Yeah, I'm gonna do them both because, you know it it all yeah. that way at least I have one no matter what will work. Yeah. I had a question if you got a car, a truck or something uh, in the 1099A process, how long do you have to keep it? If, say, you had it for a month and you didn't want it, could you sell it? Yeah, you could. It's yours. And then, but you're not going to be, hope you got something else to drive for a year. Because you can't get one for a full 12 months? Or until the next January rolls around. Yeah. January. January is January, January. So if you sold it four months before January, then January you get a new one. Where did he hang himself at? So he hung himself in one of the trees over there? And that's why. Uh, yeah, they're trying to find I'm him. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry about that, Chris. It's just it's a sad situation yeah. here. To yeah, me, to me, even over here, I feel it. My, not, but, my uh, daughter just can't. And he did, in fact. Oh, my. The cops were over there looking for evidence, I guess. Well, they were just look, investigating the crime. Yeah, they'd have to investigate. Yeah. They're probably they back here in the daytime. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, what about crazy, real crazy. estate? Uh, let's just, and it's the same principle on real estate. That help the beneficiary, like say he got a ten million dollar house. And what was that how long does he have to keep it? I was just wondering on 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 a real estate deal where you finally get one. 
Yeah. Is there a so set that time that you would have to keep it? No, you can buy it and sell it that year. Okay. Uh, I I don't cows, man. I you know my I just hurt my back out here digging up a rock and and you know I can't get up and down the stairs in this house. I need to sell. It. <laughs> you know oh, I, yeah, I, I get it. Okay. What this really comes down to you all is what does the beneficiary need? Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Well, um, I, that answered my basic questions. I, I yield to someone else. I'm sure there's plenty, but I, I appreciate yeah. you taking me tonight. Yeah, man. All Thanks right. for coming on, buddy. Thanks, John. All right. God bless and have a good evening. Bye. All right. So does anybody else have a question? Hit star six on your phone. Or six, and I think one. Actually, you know what? Um, Chris, what do you want to do right now? You just had a death right there, looks like, on your property. Yeah. Do you want to take care of that? Well, there's not really much I can do. Uh, you know. So but... what would you like to do? You want to continue? or? Yeah, let's uh, let's call it. Let's call it. There's probably going to be some cops over here freaking talking to me for too long. Okay. So then again, I don't know, man. I don't know. They may want to come around and interview us and shit. I don't know. What do you know about it? I don't know. He's crazy than a freaking bed bug. Right. And I hate it, though, man, Joe. You know? Joe was... He was harmed. <laughs> Where was were harmed. you at the time of the murder? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah. I guess they got they got done looking around over there. The, 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 they're still all over there, though. And some investigations, so. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, why don't we uh, call it a night? There's yeah. we've got two people on here that we already talked to, and two that I'm not sure of, two I don't think so, but... Um, yeah, we didn't have... Do what? We ain't had a whole lot of folks on here tonight. Right. I don't know what's happening. Well, I tell you what. Why don't Why don't we let you just go ahead and take care of that, and uh, we'll continue next week. Yeah, yeah, I will. Uh, y'all have a good night, man. I'm gonna. If I find out anything more, I'll tell y'all. I'll tell y'all next week. All right. Yeah, there's somebody coming up the road right now. All right, Chris. Thank you. And you guys have just hit stir. Six, I apologize. Um, uh, we'll see if we can make it up for you next week. So you guys go to youhavetheright.com, join our mailing list, and uh, join the website because we help you get uh, understand this a little bit better and more efficiently. Save time. All right, thank you, everybody. Good night. All right, y'all. Have a good night.